introduce yourself. Welcome to the Inner Sanctum, July Inner Sanctum with Mary Rodwell. It's so great to have you all here. I'm going to ask Mary to introduce yourself, Mary. I know most people know who you are and just to tell a little bit of your story. Well, in brief, I'm uh, an ex-nurse midwife. Um, I came into counselling about 30 plus years ago. I've worked in um, the health um, in the UK, in uh, the National Health Service, and worked as a counsellor here since I arrived in Australia in 91. So, um, and from that, I ultimately went into private practice and now um, have continued in private practice working with all, everything that is strange, weird and wonderful. I usually say to people when I introduce myself, I'm a counsellor, but I deal with the weird and the wonderful. So if it's strange, weird, um, weird, then I'm your, I'm your lady. So I think that's really enough. I'm a principal of the Australian Close Encounter Resource Network, which um, specialises in anomalous experiences, in, including uh, particularly extraterrestrial encounters, and a co-founder of Free, which is the Dr. Edgar Mitchell Foundation for Extraterrestrial and Extraordinary Research. So in essence, that's, that's the, the broad version or the small version. Well, as everyone that's watching this knows, you know, we're going through this huge transition on our planet in our consciousness and in so many walks of life. And there are, well, there are always been interdimensional, higher dimensional, different dimensional beings, call them aliens or extraterrestrials or whatever you want to call them, but different you know, different beings or off-world beings, even on-world beings who have been helping us evolve. And um, someone else has joined us. And uh, I'm just, oh, hi, it's Brad. Hey, Brad. Um, you're actually, Mary, you know, the forefront of this incredible unraveling and awakening to our cosmic heritage because you've had so many people that have come to you that you've regressed that you've had these galactic, you know, roots, you've seen their galactic lineage, if you like. You know, all of us come from source, so we all come from the one place, but then we choose where we want to hang out. And many of us have chosen to hang out on earth and do the earth thing, and many of us have chosen to hang out in other places. And, uh, you know, Gaia, the Mother Earth, put a call out at the end of the Second World War for help. And a whole lot of beings volunteered to come in and take a human life to be a part of this shift and help humanity transition. Tell me, what was your first client that made you realise this was going on, Mary? Well, I don't know if it was just one. Um, I think what I discovered over the 3,000 odd individuals that I've worked with, there was patterns of experience that were coming up time and time again. But one of the most fascinating was when you got from how it's perceived, you know, globally by the mainstream, which is they're all out to get us kind of, they pick out a couple of different types of beings and say, this is how it works. What I've discovered is something quite different. And I mean, even with my first book, Awakening, you know, how extraterrestrial um, contact transformed your life, that became very obvious that through these experiences, People changed in extraordinary ways. You know, a psychological, spiritual transition that was a transformation. Their lives changed and ultimately in a very, very positive way. And for me, that was so significant because it was not what mainstream, not even with most of ufology, they were not looking at it from that perspective. They were actually proving it was real by the nuts and bolts. Yes, we've got pictures of the craft, you know, yes, there's, uh, there's traces on people's bodies, there's ground traces, there's witness testimony, whistleblower testimony, but none of it was actually telling us why. And this has been my biggest angst with ufology is that it's not just about why, uh, about it's real, it's about why are they here? What's it all about? And, and the, the fabulous thing was that many were saying to me, you know, I never felt at home here. I don't like this planet. I find it too barbaric. What on earth am I doing here? This is not home. So what were they meaning when you've got a five-year-old saying to you, you know, I don't come from here. My real family is, you know, in space. You know, you're just here to look after me. Why are children and adults saying the same thing over and over again? 
And for me, that was what was not being looked at because after all, you can't trust experiences, can you? You can't trust those with contact because they're obviously a bit loopy. You know, they're having hallucinations or fantasizing and they really want just attention when in fact that's the last thing that they're looking for is attention. All they want to do is understand why they feel that way. So for me, being a therapist rather than initially, you know, the nuts and bolts researcher, I was looking at the personal journey. And the personal journey was amazing because as people came to terms with it, get, began to understand it through hypnosis, they would, they would explore why they're interacting, ask questions of these beings. And what they were finding was they were often here with a job to do, with a mission to help this planet evolve. So in essence, what I'm seeing is something that is actually extremely profound. And, and that is why, you know, I ended up writing The New Human because the children have even more conscious memory than the adults because they're without the programs, without the conditioning. And they're saying, I'm from Orion. I'm from the Pleiades. I'm from Arcturus. I come through a portal in the sun. So <laughs> here we've got it, our connection to our heritage. So that's really, you know, in essence, where I got drawn to the transformation, the fact we've got people on this planet that have come with purpose, like yourself and all those beautiful people that I'm seeing in front of me that understand this is the big picture. We've just got to help mainstream wake up. Yeah. I mean, in truth, we've been, we've been coming from different planets for, since this planet began, really, haven't we? Um, none of us, none of us are really from here. Do you want to tell some of the uh, stories, Mary, that people have, what they've shared with you? What's been, I know that you've spoken to thousands. You've, what is it, over three and a half thousand, four thousand? I don't know. It just keeps getting more and more and more. But um, you've got so much wisdom to share. What's, what's something that's really amazed you lately? I think what is amazing now is the way that there's almost an um, exponential waking up of individuals that hadn't realized for many, many years in their lives that this was relevant to them. And yet in the last two or three or four or five years, and very synchronously around the 2012, which I think now was more an activating frequency more than anything else, is that their whole, whole lives have changed through this activation that they've experienced, where one minute they're doing a 3D life, you know, going about their business. They might be a lawyer, a doctor, a nurse, a social worker. They may be, you know, a farmer or, or a housewife. But suddenly they have been activated by something, either the sighting of a craft or they've had a, a particular shamanic kind of experience or a near-death experience and suddenly been catapulted into this new awareness and not only realizing that, you know, seeing spirits, seeing energy fields, seeing orbs, but also aware that they're interacting with non-human intelligences, either, you know, the physical ones or the interdimensionals, hyperdimensionals, transdimensionals or whatever. So the activation of people on an exponential scale, I think, has been very validating. Whereas 20 years ago, I might get... I don't know, half a dozen emails a week. I'm getting a dozen plus emails a day now or more of people saying, this is what's happened to me. I don't know how to deal with it. My family's struggling with it because they think there's something wrong with me. How do I deal with the fact I'm seeing this, I'm experiencing this, and I, I know I'm here to do something. So for me, it's been that exponential shift that's happened in the last four or five, six years apart from what I'm learning now from the children and the children to me, the reason I believe they're so significant is because they don't watch talk shows. They don't, you know, read books on this and they're coming out with profound statements about why they hear their abilities. You know, one eight year old telling me that she can control one of the elements and hers is the wind and clouds. And then I get a gentleman only in the last week saying he knows that he can control the elements. And he's talking about the, storms and what have you so this isn't unusual in the sense that there is people out there that are aware of these profound abilities but who do they talk to who's going to listen to them who's going to even you know believe that you can do that and it's these abilities you know when they explain to you how they understand you know that they can look at you and know when you're speaking the truth 
or when you're lying as the children so many of them now appear to be telepathic yeah. so you know, this is this is the kind of thing that i'm finding quite fascinating is so this is where we're going is it guys you know this is us now not only having children that are showing us the way into our multi-dimensional nature they're actually triggering us they're actually with their frequencies and their awareness activating people left right and center that don't even aware don't even know what's going on until they realize that they've been asleep you know most of their lives so if anything it's the excitement of seeing that we are really shifting in consciousness but not only that that we've got these wonderful young souls that have come in to help us mary it sounds like you need some help <laughs> because like you and there's another lady in the states that does what you do what's her name i've forgotten her name but she you and her do you know who i'm talking oh. about yeah, uh, you're probably me meaning Barbara Lamb, who's a dear Barbara friend Lamb. of mine. Yeah, yeah. You seem to be the only two that I've seen that really does this. And from the sounds of it, the amount of emails that you're getting, it sounds like you need to train a whole slew of people to help this. You know, really, because there is such an awakening happening and it's just becoming more and more, as you say, um, apparent or exaggerated that yeah that i mean that's what these sessions are all about i call these deliberate creation for the difference makers or the new world teachers because i think that um as we go through our awakening journey and heidi knows this you know we're here to help others on theirs and i think that probably you know what you found mary is because it's so bizarre what these people are experiencing i was listening to another beautiful woman who had the abduction story. Now, oh, my brain's not working very well this morning because of this flu thing, but she's going to come on the show. And, um, and she said that she had a regression with you and found out that she uh, was a bit like a Sherry Wilde type. Now, what she was on Cosmic Ex Ex Disclosure recently. What's her name? Oh, yeah, she worked in the military. That's right. She was a young girl in the military and she had some regressions and found out that she was raped in the military. Do you do you know who this is? Uh, is that Niara? Is Niara. Niara is that? Yeah. Niara's beautiful. Um, I I met her um, in the states when uh, many years ago now, and she asked me to help her with her understanding of mm. what was you know, as a star being. She became very clear that she'd come in with a mandate, and part of the mandate was for her to experience the my lab and the military inter interactions so she could write about it and, and also highlight what they're doing. So she knew that this was part of her mission, if you like, painful and as challenging as it is. And there are many beautiful souls that have taken that on as their mission um, on this planet to highlight things, and I know Brad's one of them. You know, I, I know Brad really well, and he's, you know, the fact that, you know, I've learned so much from those like Brad that have come out so courageously and said, you know what, this is my experience and this is what this is all about. I do, I do hope that at some point, I've asked for a couple of clones actually, you know, a couple of Mary clones. So, that, you know, I could head one to the emails and one to the writing, one to doing the PowerPoints. Um, but I do think that something will happen around that when this finally gets acknowledged, we, you know, the, the main thing is working in a way that you can support people through the journey, the process of accepting their new reality, the paradigm shift that they've got to make to go from 3D to multidimensional is not an easy one for anyone when you start to become more aware of what's really going on. One of the ladies that I was speaking, speaking to actually last night was Dr. Marie Batchelor, who's an MD in, in Melbourne, who yeah. went from 3D um, had an activation in India and now works as a shamanic healer working on activating DNA, clearing the programs, all the implants, all the other things. And she, you know, she's, uh, uh, she was married to a surgeon who thinks she's gone around the bend. And here she is, you know, after quite a period of, of huge turmoil yeah. has got to a place where she's feeling okay simply because of the support of those that do know this is going on. But, we, you know, I've always said that what we actually need are centers. We need places where people can come, where they can be supported through that transition um, of, of going from 3D into their multidimensional state. But not only that, the children, 
need to have a place where they are listened to and honored with their awareness so they can tell us what they most need to act, you know, to follow their mission and, and teach us how we need to work with this, this awareness because they're the ones that do it naturally. They're the ones that are going, as adults are, up on the craft and being taught how to use their abilities, how to understand what's going on. And, you know, so that the educational system is certainly happening off world mm. um, certainly, um, for many people. But there are many that are being picked up by covert agencies, as Brad well knows, and are being trained underground for other purposes. And they're certainly not for the benefit of humanity, as we know. So we know this is going on and people need to be aware exactly what's going on with this. But for me, more than anything, it's about getting the information out there. It's not about one person. It's about everyone who you know, is a vehicle for putting this out, like yourself, that are doing such a valuable job because without you and, and those like you, people wouldn't hear of this. You know, you, you know, I'd be going to the odd conference which has got 200 or 300 people, but now because of what you're doing and others like you, this information's going around the planet and, you know, I'm hearing from China, I'm hearing from Russia, you know, Europe, all over the place, even though it's not English, People are picking up on this because it's relevant to them. And that's what's so exciting now is that we've, we've got a place where people are finally, you know, having the information they need to feel normal so that we can continue to help in this way. Look, Mira, I absolutely agree with you when you talk about the centres. You know, that um, I've had this dream of getting the kids together and I'll, I'll, get, I'll get it done. It's just like, a bit like you. I've got, I've got a few balls up in the air. But getting the kids together, not to teach them, but to learn from them, you know, to have this conversation, not in a, like so many people have kids programs and there are incredible kids in the program, probably all the kids, but it's all about, let me, you know, give you some pens and paintings and you can draw. Let me show you what to do. It's like, I'm the teacher and I'm going to teach, but I want to get the kids teaching us and, um, yeah, why, why the, you know, what do you call them? The black ops or whatever they're called, the military are taking these intuitive people and testing them and stuff like that. Like we need to have, as you say, centres where we can come and play with these telepathic and um, energetic, you know, like there's a lot of energy people out there teaching energy healing and stuff like that. But to come where we can come together and play with it and expand it and become aware of it, yeah, look, I mean, all these beautiful difference makers up the top here, maybe that will, you know, spark, you know, get, get your groups together. I know that both sure. Heidi and I were in, involved in the academy. It's about, it's about you, basically what we're doing now. It's about inviting a teacher to talk. But I think what you're talking about, Mary, is, you know, coming together to expand our empathic and intuitive gifts, aren't you? Yes, um, part of it is about supporting those that are going through this activation or this are uh, being triggered so that they can then reach a beautiful in place of integration themselves. But also because the children are actually, um, I was talking to a nine-year-old probably about three weeks ago. His mother was very keen that I spoke to him because he, he spoke to her in the light language, which she could respond to in the light language, but she couldn't interpret it like he could. And she said, um, I don't know whether he'll talk with you, but he, he's, he's, he's talking about going out of body, etc." So when I spoke to this young man who for 40 minutes didn't stop talking, all of nine, telling me how he learned to deal with lower energies and, and um, basically that were bothering him so that he was taught to um, how to manage it. And I said, so you dealt with the bullies? And he said, oh, yes. But now I go out of body. And when they're um, uh, upsetting or giving children nightmares or, or um, in any way interfering with them, I clear them. So this is a nine-year-old quite aware that he goes out of body and he sorts out the lower entities and, and energies that are affecting other children and, and, and he deals with them. So absolutely clear about that's not a problem for him because he now knows how to do it. Now, this is... You know, when you hear of nine-year-olds explaining how they deal with the non-physical um, beings or intelligences, no matter what level. Another eight-year-old told me, because her mother did a similar thing to you, 
um, actually said the gin come um, and they're sent by these agencies to take my mum down, I deal with them. So this eight year old has no problem. I can deal with those. Um, don't worry, mum. And I know where they're from. So that's the kind of awareness we're talking about, you know, where most of us are going, oh, I'm not sure about that. But these kids under 10 are explaining to me how they work with the, 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 their multidimensional reality. And this is the kind of thing. And this, he was telling him also, you know, if you get depressed, this is what you need to do. You need to focus on something positive for at least 10 to 15 minutes and then you'll shift it. People need to know this, he said to me. People need to know this. So there is this, you know, wonderful download from him in 40 minutes, which I haven't yet transcribed, where he's telling you what you need to do if this is happening or you feel like this. We've got so much to learn from them. We've got so much to learn from them. They're amazing. They're amazing. He's right about that. What did he say? 10 to 20 minutes. But yeah, the momentum, I think Esther has talked about this specifics, you know, when you're having a, a, a negative thought, be it a depressed thought, an angry thought, or whatever thought that doesn't feel good, a frustrated, if you do focus on a different uh, thought, a better feeling thought, you know, manifestation, she says 17 seconds is enough to attract a different energy. And then if you hold that for 60 seconds, it's enough to attract that energy so that it becomes denser. And then the longer you hold the vibration, not the thought, but the vibration, the longer you hold the vibration, the more you manifest what it is that you want. So usually we're usually depressed over something that we can't get, you know, like I can't get well or I can't get you know something that we want and when you hold the thought i can get and you hold it for a longer and this little boy knows about that isn't that fantastic he hasn't been listening to esther hicks <laughs> what else have they been showing you mary well, they describe about being taken off world, both physically and our body. One young lady told me that um, she was really excited and got her mum to contact me because a few nights prior, she'd been taken onto her planet where she was shown how to levitate, how to use her third eye, and was shown genetic engineering of different species and what have you as well. So that was one of her experiences. But another, another one was talking about being shown a black hole and what was inside and seeing planets exploding and coming back together again. And then what a wormhole was like, where she was seeing the past in, in absolute reality, like the dinosaurs, like she was there. So in other words, what they're showing them is a whole range of scientific um, advanced physics, right through to how to use their abilities to their programs, which is, you know, from engineering different species for different planets and what have you. So these are just some of the things. Others have been taken and shown Mars, shown other um, star systems, shown how to fly the craft, for example. You know, these, this to me is just incredible that they have this understanding. And, and she was saying to me, this eight-year-old, you know, I had to learn how to read the star maps before I was allowed to use the craft and, and what have you. Now, what children? You know, oh, yes, and when I, we come back, they cloak the craft so that nobody can see us. You know, what child of eight knows about cloaking craft, for example, or genetic engineering, or these kinds of things. And, and, and for me, that is the great clarity that they have, because that as soon as they go and get conditioned and programmed in school, slowly they lose a lot of this awareness. Uh, although one 12 year old said that, you know, I asked her, about schooling and she said oh sometimes when the teacher's telling me stuff that's inaccurate my 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 special friend is there and tells me not to listen to it and gives me the 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 you know the accurate information so in other words she's being guided what she should take in and what not to take in including one said my little gray tells me what i should take in and what i shouldn't take in and i said do you ever share that amongst you know anyone she's oh no she said because they wouldn't understand <laughs> so there you go I think that's really important. I think that with all the, and you've, you've seen a lot of this too, Mary, you know, with um, Naira Isley. She Naira. wrote, um, Facing the Shadow, Embracing the Light. So I wrote the foreword for her book. 
Did you? Ah, oh, but with all the contrasts that we experience, with all the dramas that we experience, whether it's with like way out stuff like black ops or aliens or whatever, or abductions, or even when we're experiencing the dramas on earth, like for instance, you know, my dad used to beat me as a kid and domestic violence and sexual assault, all that sort of stuff. It's usually a hundred percent of it is designed by our soul. Like it's an agreement that we, we say before we come, I'm up for that. You know, I'm going to go and experience that contrast because inside that contrast that will activate or ignite a desire or a, or a memory in me to be of service. And I think what I find in the whole ufology sort of arena is there's a lot of this victim victim sort of mentality, the them and the us, you know, the fight, the, the good and the bad. And um, instead of seeing it all as a part of the third dimensional game that we're playing and loving all of it, you know, coming from a space of loving all of it and not having to resist any of it. And that's what you uncover when you regress people, right, Mary? Certainly that's what seems to be the pattern when you take them into a place First of all, in hypnosis is accessing not just their subconscious, but the super conscious aspect mm. of themselves, plus any of their, what I call non-physical team. So when you're yeah. taking them in for them to get answers, not only will you um, get them to explore the experience that perhaps they felt had left them traumatized, didn't understand it, and wanted um, details of it, you can show them through that experience what actually happened but it's not enough to say oh well you experienced somebody probing you or taking dna they want to know why what's the purpose of that you know who are these beings why are they interacting with them all those other questions and you can do that in that space you can get them to ask questions and and the thing with that too is not only can they find out what that was about but whether or not they've been interacting with them previously you can say to them for example with one being that they're having a communication with how many times has the, have they picked you up for example and they'll reel off from three six nine twelve or whatever it is mm -hmm. so you're giving them a picture of usually a lifelong interaction in some way but not only that they may find that what they thought happened wasn't what happened that there was actually something else going on it may not just be a collection of genetic material it may be a healing experience mm. that they didn't realize was going on and, and mm. 40 to 50 percent of people have had healing experiences on board craft which most people don't know about mm. so you can start to uh, branch out so what is your connection with them? I mean, they may find that they're genetically related to one of the beings or they're one of their star family but one of the questions i've always asked is have you on any level consented to this experience mm. and generally they will say to me before I came here, this mm. was part of the mission, this was part. Of, and I will say to them, does that make sense? Does that resonate with you? Because, you know, when you're getting this information, you've got to also feel and sense it, it has a resonance as well. And they will say, yes, even though I'm struggling with that side of it because it's been really painful or really hard or really challenging. And, and ultimately, until you can get to the point of realizing that as a soul, you know, we, we um, come for an experience on this planet. And the, I call it the business plan before they came here. Because if you're doing past life regressions, as I've done so many, and you get them to the point where they're choosing to come into this particular um, present time in, in their experience, and they'll say, well, I picked mum and dad because they were this. I wanted two siblings because they'll help me with whatever. And, you, you know, I call, as I say, the sole business plan. Um, I'm needing to do this to achieve this. I'm needing to experience this to um, uh, um, experience this. When you can come from that level, there are no accidents in anything. Mm. But you have to go to a point where they're ready to see this. And for some people, they're not. For mm. some people, don't want to go there, don't, don't like that. I, I'm very much a victim of what's happened to me. Then you work with whatever level of awareness they're coming from. But mostly people that come to me are ready to go to that other level of, you know, taking from it what is the most useful rather than seeing the silver lining rather than seeing it all as they're very unlucky and God hates them. Mm. So you, know, you, you just have to work with that level of awareness. And, 
And, and that's how I think ultimately it needs to happen. Because otherwise, you, you know, what a lot of UFO researchers have done and why we get so much negativity in a lot of the, the books that are being written about this, because the UFO research has not been a therapist. They've learned hypnosis mm. and they'll take somebody into the scene, but they won't actually help them explore what does that scene mean mm. in terms of that deeper level. And I remember reading one experience of saying they don't ask the right questions. Mm. So I, I say, well, what are the right questions? Tell me what you want to know. And we'll ask that when you're in there. Mm. And then you get this whole other level of understanding from not only their subconscious, but superconscious higher self, which you can dialogue with, but also from their support team that are there as well, um, you know, guiding the whole process. So you're bringing in the whole multidimensional reality of their experience so they can get, finally get some answers and understanding, which to me then is how they integrate, because from that they can move forward again and, and in a place where they have the sense and the understanding of what this all means and then they are completely changed. It can be a 180 degree shift from being victim to being, okay, so this is what this is about. Yeah. And once you understand, if you understand why you've had an appendectomy, you know, you can put up with the pain. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, you needed that because otherwise you'd be dead, you know, or you needed that because it showed you something. It's when you don't know why you've had the appendectomy, you think that the doctors are a bastard, you know? So it's, it's about knowing why and, and ha having that, uh, that sense and understanding, which if you do it right, they can actually get that, that, that awareness. It's so important. It's so important that knowing why. And you know, one thing I wanted to...